In this tutorial, I want to do a basic dimensioning of this part to get you started. So we want to open a ISO draft. This is for dimensioning parts and assemblies. Now I just want to view that here so you, you can see a preview of the part down there. Um, so this uh, view wizard is the thing you'll start out with. Um, it changed from ST5 to SD6. It used to be more of a wizard. Uh, it popped up, prompted you different faces you want to select, but let's see how this one is. So first I have to select the part, and it's a wedge. Now what it's giving me is the left or front face, so I'll put it right here. And now you can see that I can go off of this part with different auxiliary views. Uh, so this would be similar, or it's identical to your three view drawings you're doing. So this would be the right face, uh, set that, and now I want to have the top. And I can also go on this diagonal to get my um, 3D view. It's not isometric, but gives us a 3D representation. And now when I'm on the select feature, I can drag this around. And I can also drag these around. Now you can see that these are actually attached, and they maintain orientation uh, exactly like you'd want in a three-view drawing. So you want them at the same height, so they're in the right orientation. Uh, one thing I always do to my the three-dimensional view is change the shading. Uh, this bar that pops up when you select it, you can hit the shading options and we'll just click shaded. Now you'll have to click update views to reflect that change. Anytime you change a dimension to a part, you'll also have to update views. And so if something isn't reflecting what it should be, click update views. Now let's do some quick dimensioning. Uh, here's your dimensioning tab. Uh, one of the features, like I said earlier, smart dimension, let's just choose that. And say we want to know the length of this. So we click that. Now that text, I don't know about you, but that's extremely small for me to read. So when if you select it, here is the text scale. So you can change that. Say we want to make it 4. And now it's fairly big. Um, now when uh, creating a part, if you're fabricating it, say this was a block of wood, uh, you would have to have convenient dimensions for you. So if this was wood, I wouldn't define this part as this height and this height. Now that could totally define that face, but uh, say this was a long piece of a rectangular piece of wood, and you'd want to cut it. Well, you'd want to know how long it is here, but you'd also want to know the angle so you could set your saw at that angle. So I'm going to use the angle between feature and dimension this angle. And it reads out as 45 degrees. Now you might be thinking, well, why doesn't this have a label? Uh, we can change that. Um, it doesn't by default do that. Uh, if you go from inches to millimeters, it also doesn't reflect that. Um, can also see down here it says unless otherwise specified dimensions are in millimeters angles and degrees uh, but it doesn't actively show that so we're gonna right click on this dimension and if you are picky about the units you could add a unit label here under the linear parts and I just want to type mm and now it reflects 75 millimeters now you can select more than one dimension at once by holding down control and then you can edit different things about them, text and whatnot. 